Hi guys, Paul and Thomas here. Hello. And this is going to be a quick video on... The HDOs. It's not really a review of the HDOs, it's more just me adapting to it. So do you want to explain um, exactly what you started with and what we're doing and why we're changing first? Yeah, okay, so first quick review of the HDOs because I think we can get this out of the way pretty quick. They haven't added a new switch, they haven't added a D, like an easier to access DVR thing, but what they have done is put one hell of a monitor in this, yeah? So it's well, basically... Well, it's supposed to be one hell of a monitor. Yeah, we think we've it is. seen... Um, prototypes before and they looked really good. I think especially for freestyle, being able to see ghost branches in that earlier, that's where it's going to be like just insane. So essentially we've paid a ton of money for goggles just for a little bit better resolution, isn't it really? Yeah, we're a little bit crazy. So it should actually hopefully work and if it works, well I'll probably buy another set for myself. So we got these from um, Next FPV. Yes. So I'll leave a link in the description in terms of who we purchased it from so you can have a look at that, especially if you're in Australia. But um, I'm sure a ton of resellers have got the HDOs available anyway. So essentially it's because of the OLED, isn't it? Basically, yeah, the Erla display is just, like, it's meant to be really good. We've seen it, especially with the CMOS cameras, it seems to be really good, and it looks like most companies now are going down the path of CMOS, so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, the main part of this video is about me adapting from these, which are a bigger field of view 4.3 image, um, from my Dominator V3s, which are a small field of view 16x9. So this is actually stretching a 4.3 image out to 16x9, which is what we've been essentially flying for ages now, isn't it? Yeah, pretty From much back the in the... Goggles. So it would have been like, what? Sky Zones, isn't it? Before Sky Zones, it would have been the Predators, I think, too. Oh, the Predators had it too, wasn't it? Yeah, so... so the Predators we had, this is the Fat Shark Predators, and also the Sky Zones, one and two, and then these uh, Dominator V3s are all running 16x9, so they're basically changing the format of a 4.3 image to a 16x9. Yeah, basically super view. <laughs> super view, exactly. So yeah, that gives you an idea of what they're actually doing. So we're looking at adaption. Also, the field of view is actually bigger on these goggles. These are the HDOs than these, so that means your eyes are going to be looking around a lot more, I assume. Um, and how are we going to do this test? Pretty much, we've got a track that I've got a fair bit of data on, so the AU Nationals 2018 qualify, qualify track. track. It's modified a little bit, we've uh, taken out the last two gates just because we don't have those two. So, But it'll be still a pretty accurate indication of how quickly you can actually adapt to a different set of goggles. Now we've got times, what sort of times are we actually aiming at where um, you think you're going to be pretty much close to being able to race with these. So I'm aiming on this especially too because we don't have the two gates, consistent 7.5s. I think um, 7.5 seconds, if I can do that consistently, then that should mean I'm pretty much fully adapted to these. Um, even though we're still missing those two gates, you're still going to have to manage line work and that to actually get down to those times. So I think that's a good ballpark for me to aim for. Um, so we'll see exactly how we go. Yeah, we'll we'll see we've, got we the, we've got the track set up. We'll actually do a few packs and we'll see how many um, packs it takes him to adapt. Obviously that's not going to be a true indication of adaption. It's probably going to take, what would you say, three weeks or something like that? Yeah, especially too because usually when you get into a stressful situation you kind of revert back. Um, I find that when I've gone to new race quads and everything, so this will be no different. But so yeah, so it's I more saying that initial hump of, oh I can't actually use this at all. How long does it take for me to get over that? Yes, exactly. So initially I think even if you got down to say the 7.5s within say 10 packs or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean he's fully adapted to these. In a stressful situation like as in a race, you would probably struggle with those. Yeah. So we're hoping over the next three weeks he can actually make the adaption to the HDOs and let's get out there and uh, try the track out. Yeah. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention was too, we're running the LaForge modules. Um, I'm using the V4 for this. My dad's been on the V4 for a few months now, and we've been using the V3s for like a year and a half. So they've been really solid. Dad's V4's been really good. So now I'm jumping on that train. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so first pack, we'll see how we go. Um, auto record isn't working, which is weird. So I'll have to work that out. But here we go. How's it going? Feels so wrong, I can't even hold close to the flags yet. God, the quality is beautiful though. The quality feels literally like seconds. almost double as good. It's probably, maybe it's an exaggeration like to what it actual numbers are, but that's what it feels like. Like it literally feels double as good. The detail is seconds. insane. Oh man, and it's insane. Keep on to it's insane in an open field right now. So imagine amongst trees and that. Oh man. We're going to do the proper review for this when I'm freestyling in trees because I feel like that's where these things are just going to shine. When are you going to do the track? When? I have to get comfortable. Mile 2 management is still really shocking right now, so no point yet. 
Okay, so just had one pack to adapt and I'm already feeling comfortable enough to actually start doing laps. Um, I feel a little bit queasy after that, just kind of having everything looking kind of different, but the quality was beautiful. Um, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll do some laps. I'm ex I am think realistic times right now for my first run will be like 13s and 12s, but something tells me a 9 will be doable on the first one. If I choose to push it, I'm not going to because it's wet, but I think I think I could do it off, actually just after one pack. Oh, first pack. First race pack anyway. Okay, so that was my first actual track run. Now, I said nines would be doable, I think. I did an 8.1. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, definitely not adapted to it. My altitude management's not good. But the thing was, I could see really early, meaning I could feed throttle in really early. The detail on the ground is insane. It almost reminds me of back when we did the Sky Zone 2 review with the 3D, and you had, like, a crazy amount of detail. It was almost mind-blowing where you could see like individual leaves in that. That's what this almost feels like, um, but from a 2D image. So, yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> this wasn't really meant to be a review of the HDOs, but that, that screen, it's pretty good. <laughs> So, third pack in, 7.3 seconds. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Conclusion? Yeah, I underestimated these goggles. Um, that was supposed to be uh, probably about six or seven packs were expected for adaption. This is not the video we expected, was it? No, it definitely wasn't. This is it. This is what we need to ask ourselves, right? So we bought these goggles, yeah? This is just interesting, kind of hypothetically. I think a lot of people have spoken about this. They still haven't fixed the whole battery switch issue and DVR and that. But 
these results, man. They're pretty good. Love They're hate pretty relationship, nice. Relationship with uh, Fat Shark. Yeah, it's like if they if they fix those other little bits, like it wouldn't be a question at all of like Which goggles? upgrading. Yeah, or even just upgrading because the other thing is too, a lot of people would already have goggles that are looking to upgrade. Which is an interesting thing, yeah. Like for me, because I race all the time and I want this extra bit, I want to freestyle see every little tiny little thing. The upgrade's worth it, right? If they just had those little extra things, man, then it's literally... Like everyone would, I think, upgrade like... Just, it's because it's that good. It's, um, yeah. There you go, so two packs. Two packs? Well, two race packs. What was the final time? Final time right now, 7.3. We'll see how we go. We'll see if we can get that consistent 7.5 now. That's the next goal. Let's do that next. Also, one more thing. These are my old batteries. These aren't actually my good batteries that I normally use to get those times. So those are use packs? Yeah, like um, back... Training packs. Yeah, so at ES and at MMRC, these were the packs I would use before I'd swap over to my good packs to actually try and set the um, my faster times. So there you go. So in conclusion, I expected to get to where I did in three packs over like, what was it? I expected like half a day to get to this level. I'm here in three packs, so yeah. I definitely this wasn't an issue. I'd be interested to try the field of view on gravity gates and stuff like that. So next time we're at like um, east side or something, we've got a gravity gate. Definitely see how the bigger field of view goes for me going from the small field of view to the big one. Uh, adapting to 4.3 though, and especially with that extra vision. Um, not, no dramas at all really. It's like, I feel uncomfortable. But for the same token, I can see everything so much earlier that I'm just correcting for it. So, I mean, a few more packs down the road and I think it's just going to be natural. Anyway, guys, I guess I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.